Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, we need more, more of you and less of us. God, we need more.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. We got to have more of you. We want to have more of you. Nothing else will do, my God. We got to have more of you. We want to have more of you. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Shut up. Nothing else will do. Oh, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. 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 Father, we just thank you, hallelujah, for who you are in our lives right now. We thank you, oh God, for this gathering together in your name tonight. And Father, you said where two or three of us are gathered together in your name, that you would be right in the midst of us. Father, we feel your presence in our homes right now. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have allowed us to see. We thank you for equipping us and giving us uh, every spiritual blessing that comes from you, Lord God. We thank you, O oh Father, that you pack this day with brand new mercies, and you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you, O oh God, for protecting us from dangers seen and unseen today. We give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you, O oh God, that things are as well with us as they are. We thank you for our family and our friends, Lord God, how that you are protecting them. And even God, those that are going through sickness and infirmity, you are the healer, Lord God. You've given us power, you've given us authority and the ability to use your name and to send your word, Lord God. And so Father, as we pray, we ask you to remember Sister Shelia tonight, God. Hallelujah, how God, that she is beating the odds in the name of Jesus Christ. For you said, if you be for us, you are more than the world against us. We thank you, O oh Father, that the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. We thank you, O oh God, that you've given us access to you 24 and 7, that we can come boldly unto your throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, that you would heal this land, God, hallelujah, that you would heal this land, heal this land, hallelujah, heal this land in the name of Jesus. Touch us, Lord God, where we need touching, build us up, Father God, where we need to be built up, and we'll give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray, thank God, amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Kimberly is trying to come in, y'all. I had that a little bit of an interruption there, but God is good. Amen. And I'm amen. trying to get her invited in. All she has to do is accept the invitation, and she should be able to get in. And I think this is somebody coming in now. Hallelujah. I'm going to send one more invite there. And uh, so let me see. I'm sure you're probably sending me a text. So let's see. Do we have everybody? Praise the Lord to everybody. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Lord. Amen. It's good to see y'all. Good to Amen. see everybody. Uh, yeah. Yeah, here she comes. Okay. All right. Isn't it good to be seen? Amen. 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 I told somebody that today. Y'all probably heard it a hundred times, but I told it to somebody. 
flu was I had. That must have been yesterday. So it's good to be seen. Actually, that was yesterday. A Bible study that I'm in with the uh, ladies from the state of Indiana. They work for the state. And uh, it's good to be seen and not viewed. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody looking Ooh. over you. I'm telling you. Ain't nobody looking over you, uh, looking at your body. Amen. Amen. Be seen and not viewed. Who heard Amen. that before? I didn't heard that a, a hundred times. Amen. Well, it's good to see all of y'all. Um, we have prayed, and um, if anybody wants to say anything before we get into the lesson, have a testimony, just tell your neighbor hi. I want to give this to you guys. Hi, neighbors. Hi, neighbors. Hi, neighbors. Hi, neighbors. Hi, neighbors. Oh, y'all are so funny. Let me see if live. Y'all go ahead and have, have let the Lord use you tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to thank God for this day. Thank you for keeping me uh, blessing today that uh, my friends and family are safe. Uh, COVID. Uh, 19, but um, just ask the church to pray for my daughter in law, lost her brother today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I do the COVID 19, but uh, it's just unexpected. So I asked the church to keep them in prayer. He was only like 30 something years old. So. Wow. Uh, her mother has lost his child, one of her three children. So pray for them, uh, pray for my employers. Their mother is in her 80s, but she's been dealing with dementia. And uh, they're giving her, they told them today that she they give her like a week. So it's been hard for them, uh, even though she's older. They're still your mother when you lose a parent. Oh, so God, it's still yeah. hard. Yes, yes. Just pray for them, uh, just the Indy Towing family, because it's going to be hard on all of us. You know, especially I've been there half my life. You know, they practically raised me. So uh, just pray for them. And uh, that's it. Pray for my daughter-in-law. They, they taking it really hard right now. And then it, it's just at a time like this. You don't want to lose somebody at a time like this. That's right. Because you can't be with them. Right. You, know, you can't hug them and, you know, tell them goodbye and that sort of thing. So just pray for them. And, and then just everybody else. It's just not a good time right now. Right. I told my earlier, this 2020 been a bad year. It's just been rough. None it's like it. Rough. None, None like, like it. it. Yeah. I had to, I have to, uh, it's been laid on my heart to go back and see what the Lord spoke for us at the end of 2019 and into this year. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't recall, but I, I'm going to go back and look. Uh, more so that I think the Lord kind of uh, dealt with me at the at the beginning of this year was dealing with our mouth. You know, uh -huh. they were saying this was the year of vision, but really it's the year of the mouth. And I remember admonishing us to be very careful of what we say um, because... Uh -huh because we were going to have it. So it, it was a year to mm -hmm. govern our mouth. I, that's what I recall, a year of governing mm -hmm. our mouth. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. I have everybody on mute so I can uh, 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 do this good. Minister Melvina, you got something? They gave us this, the uh, New Vision Ministries 2020 Prophetic Declarations. Okay. All right. That's one of the Say it again. Concerning, you know, speaking positive and watching our words and declaring God's word. My God. My God. You know, y'all amaze me when y'all start pulling out stuff. <laughs> like, like, uh, like what Minister Melvina just did, Brother Eddie referenced a word that was spoken back in 2017. And I have went, I went back on my computer to find it. 
And uh, it's just amazing how y'all, you know, hold on to keep things. Um, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, Minister Melvini, your mic is unmuted. Why don't you uh, go ahead and have the floor for a minute here, and I'll, I'll make my way around. Okay. First, give the honor to the true and living God and to his son, Jesus, my strength, my help, my redeemer, my pastor, to the elders, the ministers, the prophet, all God's children. I thank and praise God for another day in the land of the living. I thank and praise God for being my strength, amen, my salvation. I thank and praise God for watching over me and my family. I thank and praise God that the blood still works. Yes. Even in 2020, even in this pandemic, I thank and praise God because he said when he see the blood, he'll pass over. So I don't mind pleading the blood over my family. I don't mind pleading the blood in my house. I don't mind pleading the blood over my finances. I don't mind pleading the blood from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I thank and praise God that he's still on the throne no matter who's in the White House. And my eyes is looking to the hills from what's coming my help. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. Hold on one second. I see you, Elder. Okay, go ahead. I was saying amen. Oh, amen. I wasn't right. <laughs> amen. amen. All right, who else? Okay, Sister Irene. Hello. Hello. First, give an honor to God, who's the head of my life. I want to praise and thank God for waking me up this morning, even though today my cousin was buried and my niece is still in the hospital, but I'm still giving praise and honor to God. Also, uh, Pastor Kim, um, that message you preach, and I uh, reset. It's been a uh, like a, that was at the top of the and it, yes, and I, and that really like I thought about that uh, a few days ago, and with some of the notes I've been taking, you know, uh, from that message, I'm like, well, this this is a reset. This is God. Maybe I'm not putting it together right, but that you are, girl, you're doing good. Stick with it, you Keep know. This is a reset for what we're going through. It's a pandemic, but God is showing people who he is. So he's ready resetting the standard. So when we come out of this, if and when we come out of this, we'll be reset. You know, we're not going to be normal anymore. It's not going to be normal because he's resetting this thing. So it'll be better. It'll be better the next time around. Girl. Just keep me and my family in prayer. Sister Amen. Irene, I, 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 I want to talk to you prophetically. You have so much more in you than you allow to release. And uh, mm -hmm. along with this re resetting, never feel like you got to cut it off because you, 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 when you talk, what's that commercial? It used to come on when so-and-so talk, people listen. And I know y'all muted, so I can't <laughs> wait. Let me see Minister Melvina. <laughs> Let's see where she is. Who is the Minister Melvina? I think it's e either EF Huntner or somebody like that. Yeah, yeah. So so you have so much in you. So don't feel like you ever gotta contain what's in you. Talk with confidence. Because when you talk, you, you're saying something. You really are saying something. So I thank God for you. And yes, it's a reset or a paradigm shift. What we have been mm -hmm. listening to and used to doing, yes. mm -hmm. it's being flipped. And I like to think right side up. Oh, Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, any more hands? Reset. Kobasha. Hallelujah. I see you, Sister Chris. Here we go. Go ahead, daughter. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. I just want to thank and praise him for yet another day. I'm live and well in my right mind. I want to thank and praise him for all that he's done for me and all that he's continuing to do for me. Um, I haven't been working, and I don't know how long since the middle of March, kind of. 
but I have everything I need. All my bills are on. I have a car. I have everything I don't want for anything. So I just thank and praise you for all that he's done and all that he's doing. Way make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that it is who you are. I'm coming for you, Minister Cat. All right, you have the floor. Excuse me, but I'm in a different room in my house, so I'm trying to get comfortable. But I just want to thank God, you know, despite the fact that I've been eaten by spiders and everything else in my house as we do our spring cleaning and are preparing to move to a new location. Um, I just want to thank God for protecting me and everything because I have not caught anything from being bitten so much. And I just want to thank him for all he does for me and for keeping all of us well in this household and in my extended family um, and in my immediate family. I just want to thank him because he has protected us, um, especially since uh, a lot of us have a weak immune system and he has protected us from keeping to get this COVID stuff. So I just want to praise him and worship him. Amen. Praise God for you, Minister Cat. Uh, anybody else? I see you, Sister Mary, coming for you. All right. You have the floor. Hey, Pastor, this, uh, I just like to praise the Lord today that he is my soul of salvation. Uh, I had to end up going out to the hospital the other night. Um, they, they, they did keep me for an ultrasound. I did an ultrasound the next day. And uh, I really need prayers right now because they found a blood clot in my right in my right leg uh, from the uh, back of the knee up. So I really need prayers, but I uh, do not claim it or anything uh, that God will heal me. All right, and He will heal you. And I'm going to release Elder uh, Shirley and have her pray for you right now, Elder Shirley. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. Thank you, Jesus. Time. Lord, we ask you right now. Go ahead, Elder Shirley. Your phone went mute. Yeah. We thank you right now for healing. The doctor may see one thing, but God, you see something else. So we ask and we thank you in advance as you heal her leg, touch her leg right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Church, continue to pray for Sister Mary. She's also receiving prayer through uh, Facebook. Um, does anybody else have a testimony? Okay, go ahead, Elder. Elder Shirley. I just, want, I just want to give God all the praise and glory uh, for waking me up this morning, keeping my family safe. There was no phone call. Even as Shelly, uh, there in the hospital, I thank God that she's not on ventilator. As a matter of fact, she called us yesterday. She wasn't sounding real good, but she was sounding. And I'm happy with that. I have not heard from her today. So I look at it like this. No news is good news. Yeah. And I be saying, I called me telling her, well, she was on Facebook. And if she's on Facebook, I know she okay. So I'm, I'm just thanking God for her healing in advance. Um, because the doctor can't do what God can do. The doctor don't know what the Lord knows. And so but I'm going to continue to praise him and worship him and get, just live the best life I can live through him. So that, you know, my family could see that they, they'll come on in also. But they got a praying mother, a praying grandmother, and this too shall pass. Amen. So me, and I will for you all. Amen. And we agree in prayer with you. I'm coming for you, Minister Melvina. Okay. 
Pastor, I want to read some of these prophetic declarations. Okay, please. The Lord is my healer. My 2020 is going to be awesome. 2020 is my year of declarations. 2020 is the year of my harvest. 2020 is my year to walk under an open heaven. Yes. 2020 is my year of divine acceleration. My God fights all of my battles. The Lord is my lifeline. Sickness is not my portion. Praise Pot God. is not my portion. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord, my God. I am your covenant child. Praise God. Hallelujah. The power of life and death is in our tongue. Amen. I'm going to go back to uh, uh, Elder Shirley's testimony about her daughter, uh, Sister Shelia. I was talking to my mother today. I said, Sister Shelia is beating the odds. Amen. And I say this really because in, in Shelia's case, no news really is good news because Shelia is high risk. She's high risk, and she is beating the odds. She's beating the odds. And, and, and listen, I feel that down in my shanana. Way down in my shanana. She's beating the odds. Praise God. Anybody Amen. else uh, have a remix or want to um, testify? I don't want to leave anybody out. Sister Shakira, it's good to see you tonight. It's good that you're you're on live. Okay, let's see. I think I got everybody. That's it, isn't it? That's everybody. All right, well, praise God. Let's get, in, get ready to go into chapter 14 on the Exodus journey. I am so excited. I got a call. I think it was from Sister Kimberly. And they, her and her daughter, they uh, have uh, gone ahead. They've studied up uh, Exodus, went to chapter 14. Oh, you didn't go? Unmute y'all. If y'all want to talk, unmute. Y'all didn't study it? I'm going to get sister. I studied the pastor. Okay. Yeah, not me. Just her. Huh? No, nah, it wasn't her. It was just me. Oh, okay. But you know the point. I asked her if she wanted to, and she said she was gonna wait on you. Ah, but the point <laughs> is, here's the point. Teaching ought to inspire. Teaching you never become dependent on your teacher, but ultimately the goal of every teacher is to inspire the student to start digging and learning on their own. Elder Daphne is a perfect example of when she came uh, to New Vision, it's like somebody's giving me a chat. Who's talking to me? Let me see. Shakira, oh, you're welcome. I couldn't unmute fast enough. Go ahead, Sister uh, Shakira's in the chat room, y'all, typing the chat to me. But um, back to Elder Daphne, you know, she came in as a blank canvas and has sat under uh, my teaching for a lot of years and probably has exceeded me now because I got her started. You know what I'm saying? A teacher should inspire students to go on. So where you study, as the Bible said, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And so mm -hmm. and that's what excites me. Go on and excel. Do better. Get hungry for the word of God. So, Sister Kimberly, I'm excited for you. Uh, that you're <laughs> going ahead and getting in here and something about mm -hmm. going back to the basics is really good for us so I'm going to go ahead and I guess we can't do live I'm going to try one last time and uh, people say you know well we were looking for you on live but on Wednesday night I can't get out there I can, mm -hmm. and can barely get out there on Sunday let's see what this one does yeah, that weather been every Wednesday. It's been 
raining real hard and thunderstorming, lights going out. Right, right. So we are recording. So, um, you know, we'll have to just upload this later. So um, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, everybody. Let me close this chat right here. And uh, I'm going to uh, start the reading tonight. I'm going to read, because we read this last week, so I'm just going to read verses 1 through 7. And uh, then I need a reader to come in and pick up after me verses 8 through 11. All right, Father, we thank you for the word. And as we go into this word, let this word go into us. Allow this word to come alive tonight. Allow it to come alive in Jesus' name. Here beginneth the, the reading of God's word. Now, I don't know these big old words, y'all. Let me unmute and see if, if it's loud. No, I'm not going to unmute. Okay, here we go. Chapter 14, Exodus 1 through 7, I'll read. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pyroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Belzephon, before it shall you encamp by the sea. Let me say verse two again. Verse two is packed. I gotta, I can't, I don't like it when I, I, um, I can't hear. Verse two is packed. So I want to read it one more time. And it says, and of course, I don't know how to pronounce this, but I'll do my best. And speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pyroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Belzephon, before it shall you encamp by the sea. And so in other words, God is telling Moses and them, this is where I want y'all to set up camp. All and right. Imagine these two or three million people coming out of Egypt and they have their livestock. They got everything. They got riches. They got gold. One thing I want y'all to know, they have banners. Banners. Our banner. Cause so I want you to kind of imagine them running through this wilderness, uh, or not running, that's the wrong way to say it, but just traveling through this wilderness. And uh, and so one thing the a couple of words I want to define for you that word pyroth. The word pyroth means mouth of God. It means mouth of, mouth of water. That mouth word, of water. you see it in your Bible, P-I-H-A-H-I-R-O-T-H. -H -H. So this brings more meaning to it. It's a mouth of water. So I want you to encamp before this mouth of water between Migdal and the sea over against Belzephon. Now, I want you to break that word down, Belzephon, and the first thing you ought to see in there is B-A-A. Okay? Baal is uh, a, a false god. Amen. A lot of the other... Like, I ain't either. They're coming out of Egypt, and Egypt had all their gods. And they're on their way to Canaan, which is uh, inhabited by all of the islands. So this is giving us a picture. You're coming out of uh, Egypt with all their gods, but you you're coming into the the area. The uh, uh, what do I I want to call it? You're coming into an area of Baal, another god. This is the stronghold in the land that you're getting ready to go into. So, so I want you to break that word down and see that word bail in there. I want to see if I got anything else here, too, I want to share real quick. Uh, also, I don't know if this will be good for you guys, but I like seeing this uh, when we look at uh, territory, uh, their travels. 
I don't know how well you guys can see it. Uh, I wish I had a pointer. We're, I don't know how to use up. Can y'all see my? Yeah, we can okay. see it. Okay, so remember what did we say this meant? Mouth, mouth, of water. mouth of water. Okay, so and you can and and look, this is an overview. So this is huge. This is huge. And so this green area here is the is the uh, the path that God led Israel on. So uh, do you, does that uh, help at all for anybody? This is the mm -hmm. mouth of water. Now. Now, I can hear now. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. So this yes. area, this is a, this is a, 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 an overview. This area is mountainous. It's surrounded by mountains and water. And you, and they're being led. This is just verse two, y'all. They're being led right by the mountain of water. I can Amen. see that these are huge bodies of water and mountainous areas. And the green line is their path. That's the way that they're traveling. Amen. Okay. All right. And the key thing here is Baal. Baal is a false god. It's a strong mm -hmm. tower. Okay. The gods of Baal. Uh, that And, and, and uh, that worship uh stayed in that region i'll just call it a region on up to uh jezebel and all of all of those people so that was a strong tower and they're headed there they're headed there so i'm going to read just a little bit more now mm -hmm. from a military point of view because pharaoh was a uh, 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 the, uh, he was a, a military person. From a military front point of view, he felt like these people are trapped. They at the mouth of water. There's nothing around but mountains. I feel like I'm a god. That's what he thinks in his mind. And I'm going to rescue them. So this gives, this lets us, you know, this gives us another point of view. Uh, in getting into Pharaoh's head, you know, he maybe, you know, I think, how do I want to say this? Maybe in the past, I thought that Pharaoh just wanted to get the people back there and keep them enslaved. But he felt like he was their God and he was going to rescue them. And they were in <laughs> trouble. They were in, in uh, entangled and couldn't and had no way to get out. So he was going to be their great rescuer. So I got so much to go, so I'm going to go on a little further. Okay, so verse 3, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Okay? Uh, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So in other words, God let them get into a very difficult situation. He allowed them to get their back up against the wall so that he could get the glory. Amen. Now remember we study the Old Testament to learn the mind of God. Sometimes mm -hmm. he allows you to get in a situation, my God, where nobody can help you but God. Uh -huh. yes. All of the witnesses, remember that as they travel and as they're going forward, toward where they are headed as God is leading them, there are always going to be nations and witnesses to Amen. see what God is doing. God's going to get the glory in front of, come on, your enemies. Do I hear Psalm 23? Thou preparest a table Amen. before me where? Amen. In the presence, in the presence of my, my enemies. enemies. See, God will let you get He'll let you get in a situation where can't nobody help you out of it yes, but God. Yes, yes, And then other people are looking at you saying, how you going to get out of this one? I want to see. I mean, that's share you right now. 
That's Shelia. Uh, Shelia. Uh, 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 the majority of the people are saying, I know, I know she probably ain't going to come through this, but God is allowing her to be in the position yes. that she's yes. in right now. This is a hard case. This is a hard yes. case, but nothing is too hard for God. And when he brings her out of this, Yes, thank oh, you. God is going to get so much glory. Can't nobody yes, say they had nothing to do with nothing. Yes, God is going to yes. get the glory. Yes. yes. I wish I had a church. You're getting the glory right now. I'm telling you. But look yes. at the text because this is how God's mind works. He may not cause all this stuff, but he allowed you to get all the way to the mouth of water. Yo ain't saying nothing. Like the water is going to open up his yes. mouth and swallow you yes. up. <laughs> and he yes. said, that's the way I, let me get back on that. Yes. Let me see it again. That's the way yes. I want you to go. Right there. Take that route. Take it by the mouth of water. And I'm sure they say, yeah. surely they're going to be consumed. They're going to be swallowed up by the mouth of water. Mm. However you pronounce this word. Mm. Ooh, glory. That's good already, but we got 31. Yeah, yeah. I got to hurry up. All right. So, uh, so verse 5 says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. Listen, I want to say this. Nobody is um, is being um, what? Or how I want to say it? I just can't think today. If y'all get, if you have something, turn your mic on and just have at it. Jump in. Yeah, just jump in there. Yeah, just <laughs> say, "Wait a minute, Pastor," and jump in there and, and see. <laughs> The anointing might give you something. And it's something about when when the anointing is giving you something, it's got to be released. And so they do it. Just say, Pastor, right there, right there. And just come on in. Just come on in. All right, verse. Pastor, five. Right here. Huh? Isn't that how we are now, though? Because all of us are up against water because nobody knows how this COVID is going to turn out. It's only God that can bring us all out on the other side. We have to follow God to be able to get to the other side because we don't know if a vaccine is going to work or what's going to work to bring people out of this COVID. Right, right. That's good, Minister Cat. Verse 5 says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. It was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, not just Pharaoh, but of his servants too, was turned against the people, and they said, why have we, they, 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 they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go? Verse 6, and he, speaking of Pharaoh, made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took 600 chosen, chosen chariots and all of the chariots of Egypt. Isn't it funny while all of Israel, I mean, Egypt was destroyed by God, he left these chosen chariots, you know, while the whole economy and everything was wiped out. He left because this this was a setup right here by God. I'm going to leave your chosen chariots and all of the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Again, it was 500 or rather 50,000 horsemen, 50,000 horsemen, 200,000 footmen as well as all the chariots. Don't leave no chariot behind because they all going to get wiped out. So bring them, up, bring them all. Don't leave none. Amen. Amen. Good. And it's a scripture I quote all the time. I said it last week. Some trust chariots. Yeah. Some in horses, but we shall remember the name of the Lord our God. Yeah. Represent 
uh, horsepower. Chariots represent manpower, military might. It's none of that can stand against the King of Kings Amen. and the Lord of Lords. And finally, for me, verse number seven, I already read it. Okay, give me a reader for chapter, I mean, verse eight through 11. Y'all pray for me. The Lord okay. pardoned the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Sit so up and read louder, because your voice will carry a little better than that laying on back on the couch. <laughs> I'm sitting up. It was just a view. I'm sitting up. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> okay. okay, so we are on um, verse 8. Uh huh. The Lord pardoned the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh, Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and over overtook them as they camped by the sea near what's that? P. 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 Okay. <laughs> that's the letter P. P. For me. P. <laughs> uh -huh. I it up fast. As Spirit approached the Israelites, looked up and there were Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. And verse number 11 says, they said to Moses, "What it, what it because was it because I can't read today, guys? Are you sitting up? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to hold the phone. I'm not at my table today. Oh, okay. I should have been. But um, verse eleven says, they said to Moses, was it because they?" Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? Okay, and what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? All right, let's talk about this now. Let's, let's uh, get the mindset again of Israel. Israel are, they are newly redeemed. Amen. New converts. And they really haven't been through enough yet to put their total trust in God. Amen. So when you are newly redeemed and you are hit with a crisis, you are newly redeemed and you are hit with a crisis, the, the natural Oh my God, the natural thing to do is to be afraid, to be scared, number one, and then turn back to go Amen. back to what was familiar. And when Amen. I think about this, you know, I think about those of us that struggle with, uh, you know, you can always go back. The dog can always return back to vomit, whatever your vomit was. Some of us have vomit of alcoholism. Some of us have vomit of, of, of drugs. Some of us had uh, uh, vomit of men totally dependent on me, whatever the vomit was. You're more likely, or let me say the, um, you're more likely to turn back when you hit a crisis and you're not rooted yet. Crisis oh, go back to what is familiar. Man. So what I really want us to kind of consider is that these, these are newly converted people. And, uh, and now they know that the Egyptians are marching. I can just imagine them hearing them. <laughs> before they even see them with all them cheering you know the sound can be intimidating oh yes y'all can unmute if you want to i mean before you even see because watch this fear is false evidence appearing real so they don't they don't have to see it you can just feel it you. the enemy is on you and you know when the enemy is on you. And they can, I can imagine the sounds of the armies are far off. 
stick a pen in that, knowing, wow, these are these are newly converted people. And so what's the what's the, the na another natural thing? Because they not they are operating carnally. Right. Praise the Lord, Brother Eddie. We're in chapter 14, Exodus. They're operating out of a carnal mind. Amen. So, so fear is fear. They're operating in fear of the unknown. Amen. Fear of, of what is uh, uh, something that they haven't experienced. And so naturally, now what the, the next thing they do with that fear is they begin to complain Amen. and throw accusations at the leader. Amen. Okay, I'm coming for Elder Shirley. Wait, where is she? Where is she? You're down. Okay, come on. Oh, for some reason, your phone, Elder Shirley, I can't unmute you. You have to do it your, okay. Oh, okay. Well, my phone keep going in and out, so I'm here and there with it. But in verse 10, you know, just like we are today, they knew who to, to call on when they got in trouble because it said they look up. They look up and lift up their eyes. And behold, the Egypt was marching after them. So you like that. Heard the sister Irene's in the same let me, house. Let me mute Sister Irene. Mm -hmm. You know what? I have went in my bedroom. I have went in the bathroom, and I, it's still. <laughs> it's okay, to to you, Sister Irene. <laughs> She's a she. I, we keep losing connection here. The, the Wi-Fi is terrible. Okay. Um, well, it's in verse ten. I like what it says. Said the children of Israel lift up their eyes. Uh, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. So you know when you it's saying same, same, basically the same thing you just said. When we in trouble, we get to running, and we running, we going down the wrong way, a wrong way, wrong way. Street. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and so nobody can get comfortable mm -hmm. in what we running from. Right. The move go on straight street. Right. So you know. And, and they were, you know, and I can, in a way, you know, I can kind of understand it in a way because if it's something new to you, uh, it's, it's some fear in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you know, Pastor, I tell y'all all, all the time, I, I said, I'm in a place that I've never been before. And that place that I've never been before, I was afraid. I wanted to go back and stay where I was because right. I was comfortable there. So, you know, and that's way they are out here. Well, hey, at least we know in, in Egypt, we were saved. We, we had a roof over our head and everything else. Uh -huh. So I can kind of, you know, see where they might be uh, afraid. Because I would have been afraid. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Elder. Um, okay, come. let me come for you. Uh, let me say this before I bring you on. Guys, I have something that I have to work on the side at the same time. Um, let me say this about verse number 10. Great depression of mind usually follows exceptional spiritual triumphs. Great depression of mind uh, can follow exceptional spiritual triumphs. Him coming out of Egypt was exceptional. It was an exceptional triumph. Just like who who was it? Prophet. Um, oh y'all, my mind is just not with it today. Elijah had an exceptional defeat. Yes. Oh, All right. Remember. That was yes. exceptional. He's exceptional. He's slain all those 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, all right. Baal still in place here. And Amen. then right after that exceptional high, what happened? Came down to a low. Low. And so mm -hmm. that's where they are. Come on, Elder Daphne, unmute yourself. I got to say, uh, you know, this them being. Newly, it was hard for them to trust God. Absolutely, in the beginning, 
And uh, it, it, in our tithing, it's hard for us in the beginning to trust God before you become a tither. Uh, it's hard to, you know, pay uh, your tithes and not pay your light bill or, you know, or whatever. Or That takes a lot of faith, don't it? Yes, yes. So they, it's hard to trust God in the beginning, but once you grow and grow and grow in that in god and you begin to trust him more and more and more you know, he will he will provide an opportunity for you to follow through right you know, follow through with that with your faith right. because i can remember when i before i became a tither you know one week i was like i don't care what what don't get paid i'm paying my tithes this week and I went home and had a check in the mail from the IRS that I wasn't even expecting. So, you know, the word said, God to give seed to the source. So he made, he created an opportunity for me to trust him. Yeah. That was, you know, that lets you know that you, he, you know, you can trust God. But yeah. when you, when you be, when you're a new convert, it's hard to trust God and all, you know, in his word. And I could just, I got a, a few things that, God had made me trust him on. I remember I told y'all about the the new shirt in the in the trash bag. Mm -hmm. You know, I just pour grease on top of it and put up the trash and clean out the refrigerator. And I got to the parking lot and some said, open the bag up. You know, God said, open the bag up. Don't throw it in the dumpster yet. So I opened the bag up. It was a brand new shirt that belonged to my daughter that was in the bag. I didn't, right. and it wasn't touched. It was still brand new. So mm -hmm. situation to trust him. And this was, uh, you know, this was a situation for them. They like Pastor Kim said. They heard him coming. Right. They heard him coming. God took them this way for him to trust them, and you know, learn right. to trust him. Right. So you know, there we have opportunities where God gives us to learn to trust him. That is so well said, and it's on point. And so God has to develop a track record with all of yes. us, so we so we can go back and look yes. if He did yes. this, if He did that, if He brought yes. me through this. And so these are their experiences. These are their mm -hmm. experiences. God set this up on purpose. For yes. them to uh, uh, to go Burn. through the, the 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 hard way to get there, so that they could develop some experience yes. experience mm -hmm. with him. Anybody else? We got thirty one verses. Come on in. Thirty one flavors. Baskin Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? It's been good so far, y'all. Sister Mary, I'd be happy to hear from you. Go ahead, Sister Mary. Uh, I want to read my commentary, if I could. Yeah, for what verse? Uh, 11 and 12. We ain't got there yet. So can't, where, where, where did we leave off at? Verse 11? Verse 10. Okay, we're getting, after we read, uh, after we get a new reader for verses 12 through 16, then you can come back with your commentary. Okay. All right, any more? Y'all want to pull any more meat off of that right there, that verse 10? Sister Kimberly, come on in here. Come on in here. Pull the meat off the bone, girl. And that experience also built up their faith. Yes, say it one more time. I said the experience that they were having is being the experience they were having built up their faith. Yes. Right. Exactly. That's how we get our faith built too, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, uh, let's see, sister. Okay, wait a minute. Let's see. This is good. Minister Melvin, it looks like you're ready to go. Go ahead. Yeah. I want to piggyback off of everybody. Um, the children of Israel, as, as um, Sister Kimberly said, the experience, you got to get the experience, the faith, the trust. And then once you get all that, then you can learn to walk in remembrance and remember that if God did it back then, he can do it now. So I got to keep my eyes focused and keep going. Yes. Yes. And you know what? We're going to see this. The promises, promises are always before you. Amen. Yes. Better than y'all responded. Amen. Yes. It's always, you know, a promise is always out forward. I'm hearing a Paul say, forgetting. 
those things which are behind, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And again, only times we uh, only time we look back is because we need a reference. Amen. All right. That's better right. than what y'all saying. I just need a reference. I need to reference and remind myself what yeah. he did before. Amen. And uh, as the songwriter said, if what he had, y'all tonight I can't think for some reason. I'm a little bit sleepy. Right. If he did it before, he can do, he can do it again. All yeah. right. Same back there. Same back there. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. All right. So give me, y'all pray for me so I can wake on up and the words can, and the Holy Ghost will bring it all back to my remembrance. And I'm not going to bed when I'm done. I'm going to eat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Verses 12 through 16, or did we do 11? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, verse 12 through 16. Give me a reader for 12 through 16. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. All right. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Now, everybody, hold on. Everybody that's reading in this King James Version, you better start marking up your Bible. Don't be scared Amen. of writing that Bible. These Amen. are some powerful verses right here. And these things that uh, Moses said, the first thing he said, don't be scared. All right. Okay, fear not. Start again, 13, reader. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still. Second and the line. Amen. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. That's so powerful right now. We should all we should be just praising God. Yeah, thank you. Power of words in this verse. Fear ye not ought to be underlined. Stand Amen. still ought to be yeah. underlined. See, 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 see. The salvation of the Lord. And Amen. what says for the Egyptians whom you have seen, past tense seen, that's a hint right there that you already are overcomer, seen right. in past tense. It's not present tense, it's past tense. The Egyptians lost my place. Uh, for the Egyptians whom you have seen to seen them today, you shall see them again no more forever. That's prophetic to them. That's yes. a prophetic word to them. Amen. That's awesome right there. So Amen. we look at uh, uh, Egyptians, we liken that to enemies. The enemy that you see today you shall see that enemy again no more forever. Amen. Amen. Past is a scripture that says, This sickness shall not come upon you again. This too Amen. shall pass. Amen. You see it again no more forever. Now we're gonna we're gonna profess that. That's gonna be Amen. a confession. That those are power verses, y'all. Those are power verses. Uh Pastor. James Jackson, he said that's a that's a choice cut right there, brother Eddie. You can relate to that, can't you? That's our yes, shit down here. That right there, brother Eddie. That's a choice yes. cut. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a choice cut right there, y'all. You, you know it. You know it. Uh huh. Read on down fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. The Lord shall fight for you. Stop, and you stop, shall stop, 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 stop. I got to break it up. It's so good. The Lord shall fight for you. Lord in the Old Testament is Jehovah. Yes. Yeah. Jehovah showed himself in different attributes throughout the Old Testament. This is Jehovah Gabor. 
the Lord of the battle. Glory to God. Yeah. The Lord who fights. The Lord yeah. mighty in battle. You read that. Uh, Psalm 46 Sunday, or, or, or was it was it this Sunday, or we just referenced it? You know, yeah, he is the King of Glory, the Lord Come on now. Almighty, Jehovah Gibor, Jehovah Gibor, the Lord who fights for us, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Come on now. There's yeah. a efficiency to this. I want to say this: if you fight, God won't fight. Come on. You better tell somebody. Yeah. If you fight, God sits back and says, Amen. Let me know when you're done. That's right. Amen. So, so Amen. when we approach a situation, you know, let me try to make this. You know, my girls this week had a had a, a, a disagreement. My two daughters had a disagreement, and one daughter told me I need to go talk to the other daughter. Okay, but I said, no, no, <laughs> y'all need to work that out yourself. Because if I had got in there and it, it entered into the battle with them, it had been a whole mess. Amen. So, so either, either you fight, God don't fight if you fighting. All right. He will not fight. And, and people wonder, why is God not? handling this because you handling it come on <laughs> you handle both of y'all he's you he's not fighting with you at the same time he he said if you hold your peace all right that's what it said you gotta do that <laughs> and let him fight jehovah gabor he's mighty okay. battle start again at at verse 14 the lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Oh, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Stop, stop, stop. Woo! I got to get out of this big chair. <laughs> the Lord said, Now why are you crying unto me, Moses, when <laughs> I'm giving you delegated authority? All right, all right. Yeah. This, you know, a lot of times God said to us in Luke 10 and 19, behold, I've given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any. So a lot of times why are we crying to him and he Amen. gave right. us authority. Yes. Amen. Amen. To be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish this earth, and to All dominate right. over it. Why are you crying yes. to me? I gave you the charge to do it. All right. Yes, yes. When God has equipped us, you know, Sister Tyson used to tell us all the time, God don't do what you can do. All right. All right. <laughs> do what you can't do. All right. He comes to do what you cannot do. Yeah. He's equipped us. We have been equipped with some things you can do for yourself. Hey, All right now. The power and the authority. He said, "I've given you everything, everything that pertains to yes. life." Thank God. Thank God. My God. So, so why are you crying to me and you can take care of that one? All right. <laughs> yes, I yes, see yes. Elder Shirley. I see Elder Shirley. Wait, let me find you on here. Okay, I got you, Elder. I'm about to jump out my seat also. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Kim, you know what? They are so powerful uh, uh, because you know, like you said, I don't have to call you or Minister Melvin or Ella Daphne to lay hand and pray for me because I can lay hand and pray for myself. Come on, I have that pray, man. I don't have to call you for every little thing because I have that power. God has God. given me that power. Going back to the to the dirt, these are the same ones that cried out. Wait, in the beginning, 
uh, for the Lord to come and save them. And here they are now, they got doubts again. You know, he heard them crying. Mm -hmm. He delivered them out. And he still, he still, he bring them out. But now here come the doubt part in. That's the way we are. That's yes. exactly the way we are. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I used to, when I, when I had shingles, and when they were gone, my doctor told me, so if you don't, you don't uh, get this injection, they shall come back again. I said, no, they won't. God will heal me too. He will bring that back on me. <laughs> and that's what, because I believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe in my heart. And so, like you said, we are so, oh, wow. Every little thing, we can't do nothing for ourselves no more. Come on, and, and I always say, I may, I may not can pray like Minister Marvina, I may not can sing like Sister, but hey, I got my own kind of power. Come yeah. on, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> uh, glory, 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 glory. <laughs> I don't have a job. They call Pastor Kim or get on Facebook and say, Y'all pray for me. No, not me. I'm through, y'all. <laughs> Come on, brother. Amen. That's awesome, y'all. Yeah. That's awesome. It just has awesome. to learn how to. We got this power. Amen. He didn't only give it to him, he gave it to all of us. Amen. All we have to do know how to use it. Right. Pastor Kim. And so what that, I'm going to come for you, Minister Melvina, what that tells us is we need to, uh, I, I'm going to say this, the church for a long time has suffered from identity crisis. We don't right. know who we are. You know, we know who right. we are, but we don't know who we are. We don't trust mm -hmm. the power that's been given to us that's on the inside of us. So we got to know who we are. Yeah. I want to get Minister Melvina and then I'm coming for Minister Cat. This this reminds me of what Pastor Grace used to teach us about being low maintenance saints. That means I don't gotta call the pastor for everything. It's some stuff that I I need to learn how to be a maintenance over myself. Amen. I don't need to as elder okay. to teach. I don't need to go on Facebook and say, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. When I can pray for myself, I don't got to uh, uh, ring the pastor phone off the hook and ask her to pray for my toe when I can lay hands on my own toe. It's so <laughs> yeah, man. don't need us to do what we can do ourselves. Right. Amen. And you must understand, uh, along with this identity crisis thing, people are starving for attention. Yes. Attention. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, let me come from Minister Cat. Minister Cat. That's a whole problem in and of itself. Come on, Minister Cat. Did I see your hand? You know, the, uh, the thing I want to, though, also iterate, they did know who to call, cry out to because there was one thing that God taught me is when I could not do it by myself, I was taught who to cry out to for help. Because when I got power of attorney over my mom, I told my Aunt Bert, I have no idea what I'm going to do. But when I get her back to Indiana, God and I, will we will figure it out. <laughs> Because I had no idea how to work out the problem at all. I was just given a problem, and I said, all right, we'll figure it out. And that's because I had the security to know that I had somebody that had my back. Amen. You know, I had people that would have my back, and I had God that had my back that Amen. would help me get through the crisis and being able to depend on him to get through the crisis and learn how to do something I've never done. Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Let's get, get back in the text. Minister Melvina, pick up at verse 15, please. Start again there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel yes. that they go forward. Stop right but, there. Stop right yeah. there. That's a whole message. 
by itself. You can't go backwards. Come Salvation on, is progressive. It's continually, I'm not going back. I won't go back to Amen. the way it used Amen. to be. Amen. 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 With, with Christ is a progressive, it's a forward walk. Everything, Amen. look, everything is ahead of us. Amen. Amen. Promises are ahead of us. We must Amen. continue to move forward. That'll preach all by itself. Amen. Tell them, speak to them that they go forward because God Amen. knew what was in their mind. I yes. want to go backwards. Yes. But God, Amen. because he knows everything, tell me, open up your mouth and tell them, go forward, don't even be stuck. Fear will paralyze you. Yeah. Amen. What's, what's a, a equally as bad as going back is to be stuck. Amen. Amen. Stuck, I remember them years and years ago, that message God gave you. I forgot something about stuck, stuck standing still. Stuck standing still. Yeah. <laughs> that was way back on 46th Street. Stuck <laughs> still. Move Amen. forward until he tells you, okay, stop here for a minute. Amen. Okay, so that's how that's a whole message by itself. Don't talk to Amen. me. Talk to them. And all right. All right. Move forward. All right. <laughs> and you know, somebody said it once like this: Stop talking about your problem. Come on. All right. Do it. Amen. Of your problem. All right. I said that right. But it fits good right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, talk to God about your problem. Yes. Verse 16, the final verse, minister. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. Divide it. And Amen. The children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. My God. Little commentary Amen. right there. The Red Sea did. Watch this, y'all. Now, this is commentary. The Red Sea did not begin to divide until the feet of the Israelites came to their very brink. Watch this. Otherwise, they would have crossed by sight and not by faith. That's Amen. Good. Uh, we see that Amen. repeated when the That's priests good. carry the um, Ark of the Covenant, when they had to cross uh, Jordan and different places, the priests had to get to the brink of the water. You know, before they would go across. So the water says, this commentary says that the water didn't part until, because this was a faith thing. You got to approach this. You got to go forward, go forward, get your toes wet. All right. <laughs> go forward, step out on faith. Step out on faith. The water's faith. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so don't be scared. Just go for it. This is so good, y'all. So now I want Amen. you to see this picture. Where's Sister Kristen? Kristen, let's look at our, our map again while I, I talk about this a little bit. Let's see. We're going back to this map, and I want to reiterate. <coughs> um that you know. This is a mountainous area, and I want to I wanted really to uh, get this to Sister Kristen. There was nowhere to go. Um, you got water. I, I hear the song, water rose up on both sides. You got water everywhere, bodies of water. Yeah. You have mountains. You th They're in a place they couldn't go to the left or the right. There were mountains on each side of them. And Pharaoh's army is coming before them. So they got water in front of them. But they got to cross this sea, Red Sea. They got water in front of them, mountains on both sides of them, and an army quickly coming after them behind them. Amen. And let me just ask this from last week. 
Uh, how did God lead them? This is a question from last week. How did God lead them? By fire and lightning. Isn't that awesome? So when God Amen. said, y'all wake up in the middle of the night and y'all going to travel by night, fire was there to light the way for them. Glory Amen. to God. And, uh, and, and uh, by day, a cloud uh, was there to lead them. Okay, so give me a minute. Uh, now at verse 17 through 20. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall. Uh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me start over. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his uh, horsemen. Yes. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten uh, me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Keep going. Uh, yeah, let me read verse 18 again. And the Egyptians okay. know that I am the Lord uh, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Verse 19. This is key. Verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. I want you to stop right there because that is so powerful. Literally, the Lord was leading them by this pillar of, of uh, or by the cloud. It's referred here as the angel of the Lord. But now he's going to take another task and go behind them and literally be stand between them and the enemy. Ooh, this the is enemy. a rear guard. Rear Amen. guard. Rear guard. He will be, as, as the Egyptians now are gaining, uh, they're getting closer. Now, the Holy Spirit, which was leading them, because you can look at this cloud as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes positions, changes offices, changes titles. And literally now it's saying, I got your back. Oh, I wish I had a chip right here. He changes and he becomes a rear guard. Rear guard. Amen. So awesome to me how the spirit, uh, uh, as they were gaining ground, as the enemy was gaining ground, now it's time for the spirit to change position and become your rear guard. That's so Amen. powerful, y'all. Y'all, it's so powerful. Literally that, uh, standing between you and the enemy. Woo. I'm coming for you, Mr. Melvina. Go ahead. God is letting us know I got your front and I got your back. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So you ain't got nothing to worry about. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. And you know, I, when I think about, you know, the, the Ephesians chapter six, and it talks about having on the full <laughs> armor of God. And how yes. God gave us something for our uh, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate Amen. of righteousness, righteousness. gird your loins uh, about yes. with this, with truth, and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We got all this armor, but He never gave us anything for the back. Um, all right. All right. Listen to the lesson of offense. And I, you know, I've been trying to do this for years. Defense versus offense. And brother, you might have to jump in here and help me. He uh, uh to be uncovered in the back, he's got us covered. So that's right. You know, that's defensive or offensive. Sometimes he's our offense, and then other times he he switches roles and becomes our defense. Does that make oh, oh, oh glory? Amen. 
that makes sense to anybody. Yeah. So, so God is, he said, I am that I am. Right Oops. now, I need to be your rear guard. Because All right. you're gaining ground. The enemy is gaining ground. And I'm going to block it. All oh. right. All right. All right. And I, I ooh, this reminds me of uh, Jesus being our great mediator. All right. So, you know, and he uh, stands and blocks us with the what the Bible called the uh, the accuser, yeah, the devil, the accuser of the brethren. So he stands, in, you know, he's the mediator between us and God. When the devil tried to shoot something at us, I mean, shoot something at God. Did you see her? Did you see what he did? Jesus, like, uh, uh-uh, I'm right here in the middle. I got this. <laughs> That's one of your purpose, Minister Melvina, the God in the middle, I think. I heard you All say. right. All right. I see you, Elder. I'm looking for you over here. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. Okay. You. Come on, Elder. You know, I look at this. It kind of reminds me of a football game. Come on. Where they try to get the quarterback. <laughs> you know, they try, but you can't, you can't, you can't. And get to them unless you come through through eleven of us. And so I can see, I can in my mind, I can see the, the uh, Israelite and the and the chariot them chasing behind them, and God get behind them. So I'm gonna let y'all get a little further. Y'all just keep on going because I'm a block film. They ain't gonna be able to go too far. So don't worry. You just keep. You don't have to run. You can walk. Because I got your back. Just keep going forward. Keep your eyes forward. Don't look behind because I got what's behind you. So just keep on moving forward. Uh-huh. Come on. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Encouraging for us. I'm coming for you, Brother Eddie. This is encouraging for us. We study because this is how God operates on behalf of his children. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm coming for Brother Ed. Okay, he was not forsaken. Huh? Come on. I'll That's never what he said. And if he had to change really? positions, he will. In other words, he has us covered front and back. Yeah. Okay, Eddie, I'm coming for you. Come on, Jesus. Brother Eddie. You know, uh, I just thought about what mama said when she mentioned about football team, right? <laughs> and that kind of grabbed me because, you know, I, I love sports. So I, I this came to my mind. Out of all the football teams that is in the NFL, there was a team when Tom Brady was with the, uh, the New England Patriots. He was the only quarterback in the NFL that barely got touched. And the reason why they, he was untouchable because they had all his surroundings. This man Amen. was standing in the pocket. He was standing in the pocket for five minutes, have lunch, dinner, and everything else, and then throw the football. And that's that's oh. what you call being well protected. And that's how God is with us. We are very well protected. He got yes. all all our surroundings. He's all around that. Yeah. So I wanted to bring that up because when Mama mentioned football. A lot of quarterbacks get knocked down, but I'm telling you, Tom Brady was untouchable. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So the term I want you to take away from this is rear guard. Yes. Rear guard, yes. verse 19, and the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. Yes. This is a uh, pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, he placed himself between Israel and the enemy. And whoever's reading, start again at verse 19, just so we can get it all. Who's the reader? Elder Daphne. Oh, unmute Elder Daphne and start again at, uh, let me see, wait, let me find you. I got you. Start again at verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud, and the pillar of the cloud 
went from before their face and stood behind them. And my commentary also said, this is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reader. Amen. And what did and it, it came say, reader? To... Okay, how far am I going? You are going to verse 20. Okay. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to them, so that the, the one came not near the other all the night. Read 20 again, Elder. Okay. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to them, so that the one the one came not near the other all the night. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is a miracle in and of itself. To, to from okay, the cloud is now the rear guard. Amen. Now, to the approaching enemy, it was dark on that side of the cloud, so that they couldn't see. But on the Amen. other side of the cloud, it was light so that Israel could see. Now, we see a whole lot of things in here. You know, we're dealing with an enemy, and we're dealing with God's people. We're dealing with darkness, and we're dealing with light. Uh, God has called us, what, out of darkness into his marvelous light. We shouldn't be on the dark side over there. But All right. So it's two sides. It's always two sides. But the miracle here is that this one cloud, this protection, the Holy Spirit, made it so the Egyptians could see. But on the other side of the same cloud was light to his people. Because we walk in the light. Amen. Yes. I could just think about every scripture that talks about light. We are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Who can think of some more light scriptures? I see somebody talking to me. Let's see. Somebody might have a question on the floor. Uh, all right, Sister Shakira talking. She said, amen. She's chatting, y'all. Praise God. I, I'm just glad to see the activity going on. I'm coming for you, Elder. Hold on one second. Let me shut the chat. Uh, close the chat. And I'm coming for Elder Shirley. Come on, you're unmuted. We are the light of the world. He's a light to my feet. Those two are going to count really good. Uh-huh. The Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. That's my path. So All he, right. All uh, right. So it's something wrong if we on the wrong side of the cloud. I didn't yeah. get. <laughs> yes, yes. Come on yes. out of that darkness. Come out of darkness. Right. And be translated into the mark. Walk in the light, the beautiful light. Jesus is the light of the world. Okay, we got to get out of here. Okay. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? Okay, I'm coming for you, Sister Irene. I see you. Let me let me mute uh, Elder Shirley, and I'm looking for Sister Irene. Where are you, Reenie? There you are. Okay, go ahead, Sister Irene. I was just going to say, uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation, and who shall I fear? That is it. That's, that's the one. Salvation. This is for them. Yes. Shall I fear? Yes. Because shall I fear? With fear, right? Because and don't blame them. Don't talk about them. Uh, yep. said, you know, we are just like them, and these are new, new converts. They are mm -hmm. just developing their experiences with the Lord. Okay. Yes. All right, we're almost done. Give me a reader for verse 21 through 25. 21 through 25. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind stop, stop, all that stop, night. Stop. Watch this, y'all. That's, that's one of the winds I like to talk about. You need to underline... East wind, and I ain't talking about East Wind Village either. 
East Wind. Something about, I can't put my finger on it, and they done tore that down or changed the name. But East Wind, something about that East Wind. Oftentimes when I pray, I command that East Wind. That same wind, God is specific. This wind came from the East. Okay, Rich, start again, uh, Sister Irene. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Yes, the sea opened. At a, watch this, and this is noteworthy. The sea opened at about the pace that they could slowly walk. So imagine that the sea opened about the pace that they could slowly walk. Now here, can you imagine? I'd have been terrified. Still moving. See, I, I've said this before. Sometimes we have to do things even if we're afraid. Sometimes, Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because the worst mm -hmm. thing would have been to let fear paralyze you and you stay stuck there, still standing there stuck. Amen. 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 So, so the thing where we get victory and where we conquer fear is that we, we do it anyway, scared or not, I'm doing it. And, mm -hmm. we get, and then we become overcomers of it. So yes. can you imagine how they are walking and they just really starting to build their experiences with God. You got all this water up on both sides and you walking through here on dry ground and the enemy I know is talking <laughs> and that water gonna come down on you when you get right um, in the while you right in the middle. You get in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't funny. <laughs> but you know I, I'm always laughing. We make it real because we want to deal what we are doing is dealing with our human emotions. We experience Amen. these things. Sometimes we go through things that are, we have to face things that are humongous. Brother Eddie, I'm sure you can speak to this. You know, you got reports that you had colon cancer. And somebody, or was it colon or prostate? Prostate, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Uh -huh. You get a report. There are certain things that we face in life that, or honey feared and and the saints to say you know they they got so much holy ghost they ain't never afraid of nothing i tell you that's a lie that's why god put the scripture in there for god has right. not given us a spirit of fear so fear. he can remind us when we got scared we can look in there and say that's god right. has not given us a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound of mind fear this is another scripture fear calls is torment. Yes. Fear causes torment. That's a script. Yes. I've experienced it. Fear causes yes. torment. But then it turns it and said, but perfect love, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. So when you're in a situation, you in the in the middle of, of the Red Sea and fear wants to grip you, you got to just say, you know what, God loves me too much to allow this water to come tumbling down. Or whatever, or this Amen. Amen. To make me lose my mind. Or this situation to make me go stir crazy. Come on, somebody. Amen. We got to get through. Are y'all just praising him or did I see a hand? So I wanted to say something, Pastor Ken. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, you know, they was they was also facing so much, not only that that God parted the Red Sea for them, but you know, I just thought about God's timing. You know, his timing was so amazing and so awesome. Because now not only did this water was just standing over them and they was looking up and seeing these waters divided on each side, but you gotta realize they was watching whales, they was watching other fish. All this, all this was still going on. It wasn't like the Red Sea had, you know, departed and all the fish went away and all the whales went away. All that still existed to them, and they had to not only walk on this, on 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 this dry land as the Red Sea was departed, but they had to walk and look at what they was amazed about and wonder 
if one is maybe a whale or maybe a shark or something would come, but the timing of God is so mm -hmm. perfect and so awesome that he had everything, even the fish and the whale, they would got a standstill. Yes. Listen, stand still. You to remind me, because I forgot about Sister Mary. When we get through this, it's something she wanted to read to us. Please remind me to come back and let her read that. I've completely forgotten. Amen. Who's my reader? Who was reading? Uh, number 22. Okay, go ahead. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry, land, dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Let me give you a commentary here. It is believed that the path through the sea was from 10 to 12 miles wide. 10 oh. to 12 miles wide. And oh, yeah. depth, the depth was somewhere between 20 and 40 feet high. Wow. OK, come on. Wow. wow. And the Egyptian pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. Go read, All Pharaoh's, read that again. You left one word out. Read and it. the Egyptians pursued mm -hmm. and went after them into the midst of the sea. You always don't have that little bitty two letter word in? No. It don't? Okay, maybe it's you on another translation. Okay. Well, King James said the Egyptians pursued, and these little words are important, and went in. They went in after them. Go ahead. Um, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Uh -huh. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire wow. and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Read that and he took one more time. Off. Read 24 one more time. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Wow, okay. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Now look at that, y'all. Look at the wheels. Did you notice the wheels? Yeah. <laughs> he took off their chariot wheels. Can Chariots. you imagine trying to get through all that soil? Can you just imagine? Yes. <laughs> he, I mean, that was and the wheels are wobbling. Wasn't it? A sure enough struggle. They got stuck. Off stuck. Their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face. See, remember, this is the enemy. The enemy mm -hmm. will stop at, at nothing. This is the devil. The devil. devil. This is the <laughs> devil pursuing after us. Don't you know that he's still roaming, seeking? Whom he may the yep. devil will Amen. stop at nothing to nothing. pursue God's children. The devil wants you. He wants you back. And see, and one reason why he troubles us so much is that we're on the Lord's side. When you was on his side, you didn't get all this trouble. Not at all. At nothing, he wants to, he wants to uh 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 he is forever just know the devil is any by any means necessary will use anybody and anything to get you back in his grips because mm -hmm. you would think you know didn't they see didn't these egyptians see what happened in egypt you would think they wouldn't even come after them but the devil mm -hmm. is relentless Y'all not saying that to me. The <laughs> devil won't stop. As they say, he, he's, he's thanks, working thanks. 24 and 7. He takes no breaks. I got a church over here. 
said 25, and he took the chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of, of Israel for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. So God is fighting for Israel and God is fighting against Egypt. Egypt. All right. Any, uh, we got just a few more verses, y'all. Anybody got anything to, to say about any of these verses here? I see Minister Cat. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you as soon as I, I see you in this list. Where are you? There you are. Okay, go, go ahead. Um, you know what I think is neat about it, and some of you may not know, but I did a little history study on it. And they talk about it a lot, how the Egyptians' chariots are still in that Red Sea, mm -hmm. and they can't pull them up because they will disintegrate, but they are still covered in that Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So we still have a record of the miracle that God did at that time now. Because they're there, they're covered. Mm -hmm. And you can go and you can see that in the history, they will actually show you that they have their hit, uh, pictures of that in the Red Sea. I've seen it. You see it on some of your history channels and stuff. I've seen it. Yeah. So it has been documented. This, these are not fairy tales. This is real. All of it's real. I believe all the word of God. Anybody else got anything to say before we get our final verses? All right, may I have a, a new reader for verse 26 through 31. Take us home. Wait, hold on, who is that? Let me, let me, shut, wait a minute, let me shut down Sister Irene and, uh, and Elder Shirley, let me unmute you. Okay, 26 through 31. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the water may come again upon the Egyptian, upon their chariot, and upon their horsemen. Yes. And Moses forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptian flee against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptian in the midst of the sea. Yes, yes. And the water returned and covered the chariot and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There would may not so much as one of them. 29. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel walk upon dry land in the midst of the sea. The water were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Mm. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptian, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Stop for a minute. Stop for a minute. I just want y'all to write down DOA, dead on arrival. Dead. Dead on arrival. <laughs> Dead on arrival. They saw them. Now, this is the promise of God. The Egyptians that you seen today, you will see them again no more. So they're Amen. dead on arrival. They start washing up. Brother Eddie talked about all the, the sea creatures. Now, here they are washing up. Okay. Uh, start at verse 30 again, Elder. Though the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptian, and Israel saw the Egyptian dead upon the seashore. My God. And, it, and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptian. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now, isn't Amen. that awesome? See, see, God will, will vindicate you. Every leader, amen, you know, God uses every leader. Just I'm thinking about uh, Joshua, 
how, you know, when he took the reins after Moses and God said, the same favor I had on Moses, I'm going to have on you and the people are going to believe you. Mm -hmm. So this miracle not only validated the authenticity of our, our, our king, but it also validated the authenticity authenticity of his servant Moses and let me see uh so exactly what the Lord said uh, again that Israel would not see the Egyptians anymore that all came to pass and uh, I like verse uh, 31 and Israel saw that great this is what Elder Daphne we were talking about earlier these are their experiences now and now they can look back mm -hmm. And, you know, and they are told to keep this, you know, keep celebrating this. Don't forget this great deliverance, you know, and, and as we go further into this, you're going to see how Miriam, Moses' uh, sister, gathered all the women with timbrels when they got on the other side. It's something, honey, began to sing songs. Now, I want y'all to know, that all of these experiences became their song books. It became the oh, wow. songs. Miriam got over there with the tambourines and timbrels on the other side of the mountain and said the horse and his rider had been thrown into the sea. And they began to pray, <laughs> God, we gonna see that. Something about when God bring you out, when God brings you over, Hallelujah. People may not understand your praise. Hallelujah. My God, but when God has, has done a mighty deliverance, Brother Eddie, my praise cannot be contained. Y'all not saying nothing. But I'm telling you, I can see Miriam over there. It's almost like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Our God has overthrown our enemies, the horse and his rider, have been cast down into the sea. My God. Let me unmute y'all so I can hear you. All right, All right though. Amen. 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 Sister Mary. Let me, get, let me get Sister Mary real quick, because I don't want nobody you know, going away saying, oh, she, she ignored me. I'm very forgetful. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that back to my remembrance. Share with us, love, what you wanted to share. Uh, this is in chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. Uh, wherefore, this, mark, this marks the first of 10 episodes of Israel's unbelief beginning at the Red Sea, and concluding at Kadesh Barnea, because of these ten events, an entire generation was presented, prevented from entering the Promised Land. The New Testament book of Hebrews recalls this event, these events, using the Promised Land as a picture of heaven and wanting the this obedience and unbelief and still help keep people out of the final land of rest all right sister mary that's good commentary thank you for sharing that with us today and, and say amen church amen. 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 everybody's unmuted amen, amen. Huh? I can imagine them. That messy. Hold on. Hold on. I want to. I want to hear you clearly. So I got to mute everybody and unmute you. Okay, go ahead now. I can imagine when they got out of the sea, which they was on dry land, but when they got with all of them. Get on one accord, get in this land, and turn around and look, and looking for you know the one the uh, favor of them chasing them. Mm -hmm. And when they see when they seen that water, come on down. As, as brother Ed said, the fishes and all of that. I you know what I can see them dancing and Thank praising you. God right there. I can see that. They said, let's party now, y'all. We all made it through the, 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 
hard times. And you know, and, and like I said, we go through, they went through, but they made it on the other side. Yeah. We go through, but they let us know the word through don't mean it stop on, on in the middle, nothing. They went through, same thing we do, we go through stuff, but that's the key word, they went through and made it out. Because when, when we go through, when we go through and make make out, hey, ain't nothing for us to do but to praise God because we know He's the only one that brought us through it and brought us out of it. So I can see that. Amen. Amen, Elder Shirley. Anybody else? Raise your hand because I'm, I'm really I got this screen up. Okay, I see you, Sister Kristen. Go ahead. I was just saying how um. Like the whole chapter 14, chapter 15, I, the song you said they were singing, that's that's all everything they went through. Like coming through their little journey, that's that's what they were singing about. All their problems and how they got through and how hard it was and how God protected them and showed them the way and all that. That's what they're singing about in the next chapter do you have one verse uh of miriam dancing i can't i don't know how I, i'm i was trying to read it i don't know how it goes but I can, it says i will sing to the lord for he is highly exalted the horse and its rider he has hurled how you say that hurdled into the sea yeah just, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has became my salvation. It just don't sound yes. like a song, but they probably made it sound they like it. They up being, see, um, it wasn't a song right here. It's a praise right here. It became their songbook because the book of Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, mm -hmm. the, that is the hymn book of the Israel lights. Mm. Psalms, the whole book of Psalms are a uh, uh, a hymn. Yeah, it's their hymn book of their experiences all the way through. Mm -hmm. And there are particular Psalms that are related to this experience. Mm. Psalms is, that's why I call you a psalmist. I, I was I was um, researching it. Yeah. I was trying. What did you find out about that? Oh, uh, I didn't really uh, get it. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Well, what the, it was. The whole book of Psalms was their hymn book that they sang from, and every every psalmist writes from their experiences. Every every song we hear in the secular world, y'all can uh, start naming songs. You are hearing the experience of somebody bringing yeah. to their experience. Mm -hmm. A woman was a woman who she went through that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me ask you, what does this screen look like for y'all? Or do y'all see yourselves in the way of this or should i make it smaller or bigger or what any suggestions let me do this like this let me do this oh shoot i didn't mean to do it like all the way like that okay so y'all ready for my my little last piece right here uh -huh. all right let's go can i the lord instruct moses to encamp the people and why that's in verse number two. Where did the, the, the bow and, and mix out in uh, the uh, map of water? Okay, all right. So that that word that started with P, stiff. yes, what? that word P is what is the mouth of water. That's right. That's okay. right. Or a pocket, kind of like too. Yeah, but it's it's defined as the mouth of water. Let's not make it a pocket. It said it's the mouth of water. Amen. Um, okay, let me see now. Why, y'all? Come on, let's have this conversation. Why? Why did he put them in in uh, have them in camp where they where he had them in camp? Why? 
Use your Good. logical mind. We've been talking about it. He was trying to pull, to pull Pharaoh in. Pharaoh, Pharaoh thought in his mind that he had them. They was trapped. Okay. His, right. That's good. Why did the Lord allow them to go the way they did? He could, so they could learn to trust him. There. Come on. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Anybody want to add to this, Elder Daphne? Come on. Y'all, anybody, everybody. So they can get some experience, faith, trust God, and then they, they'll be able to walk in remembrance. That's good. You said that earlier. And yes, that's man. Good. That's good. These are their experiences. Okay, let's go to the next one. What will the former slave owners seek to do? Y'all write these scriptures down. We're not going to uh, talk about them. So Egypt, Egypt and Pharaoh was the slave owner. So what will the former slave owners seek to do? Y'all write those scriptures down and you can look at them later. What did, okay, Egypt is the enemy. Egypt is the slave owner. What will the former slave owner seek to do? Anybody? Get his slaves back. Get his back. Good. Good. That was slave. That was slave did. They work. Well, what would the slave owner want to do? Get the slave back into their control. Right. Yes. Right. So the slave oh, owner will come after you, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. We're just talking. Write your scriptures down. You can look at them later. And uh number three. What two great statements did Moses make to the Israelites? There's your hint stand, right there. Stand still. Stand still. Fear not. Fear not. All right. <laughs> and see the salvation oh. yes. of the Lord. Yes. That's the all. The Lord will fight for you and you should hold your peace. Yes, y'all. Come all on. Right. And this is the same God that will do this for us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Right, I didn't mean to have them come down together, but they did. Number four, what strategic move was strategic? I love the word strategic move was made by the angel of the Lord. What did the angel of the Lord do strategically? He went from the back to be the, to, he went from the front to be the back to have them covered. Yeah. Right side. Uh, right side up. <laughs> yeah. That's really amazing to me, man. That kind of follows really who I am that I am, right? Whatever, whatever yeah. you need, yeah. whatever predicament you ever need me to be. I Amen. Mean and what was that back part called? What was that position called? Rear guard. Rear, rear guard. guard. Uh-huh. He'll become your rear guard. My God from mm -hmm. glory. That's so good. And then number five says, what might the newly redeemed soul fear and be tempted to do? What Go might back. The Go back. Go back. And what might what might people fear? Let's bring it on where we are now. What are some of the things that new converts might fear? To trust God or just if they come up again against anything. Uh you know, anything hard, you okay. might fear God and just just go back to what you know. Right, right. It's natural mm -hmm. almost for uh, the newly redeemed or new convert uh, to fear and mm -hmm. it to go back to whatever mm -hmm. it is. And if you're interested mm -hmm. in those scriptures, go ahead and, you know, write those down. We'd have been on here till 12 o'clock tonight trying to read these. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, so those scriptures relate to those subjects. What might the newly redeemed soul fear and be tempted to do? And that's First Timothy 1, 18 through 20. Y'all see it right there. Mm -hmm. And that's just about, just about, tell me when I can take this down. 
I read mean, all those scriptures. <laughs> okay. I can take it down now. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, ma'ams and sirs. I'm going to unmute everybody. Thank you so much. Give that. Tell them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word. The door is still open. It's about nine on four. We got uh, ten four minutes. If anybody got anything on their heart that they want to uh, release that as it relates to our uh, lesson tonight, feel free. Amen. Hey, Sister Lona, I see you there in the back. Snuck me in. Huh? Just snuck me in. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we're going to uh let's see who I'm gonna pick on tonight. We're gonna to ask Kimberly if she will dismiss us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, hallelujah, for the Bible study we had on tonight. Father God, help us to hide the word in our heart. Hallelujah. That we don't sin against you. Father God, I pray for each and every uh, person online. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, just asking that you bless us. Hallelujah. Father God, we will forever give you all praise and all glory and all honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love you. Good night, Good night John Boy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. These buys are so funny. <laughs> yeah. Look. What's that? Uh -huh. Girl, where y'all get those from? Wait, let me go get it. Show and tell, Tommy. What is it? Lemon bites. Oh. Your daughter says she wants some. <laughs> Your daughter says she wants some. I'm on my way. <laughs> Look, 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 I mean. Yeah, okay. What is it, Pastor? Show it again. 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 Show Chicken. Oh, Good, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love you all. Love you, Love you too. Season. Bye. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to lock my car up. <laughs> Bye. I still ain't hanging up. I can't hang up. Still ain't hanging up. <laughs> I'm pressing